Hey beloved, Krista Pettiford here and welcome to my channel. If you're new, welcome back if you are a subscriber. Today I want to share with you a prophetic word of encouragement. I heard the Lord say, what are you believing God for? Ask my people, what are they believing God for? And then I heard him say, speak to it. And so I just want to encourage you today that the prophetic words that have gone before you, the things that you are believing God for, the things that you are standing in faith for, the promises of God that you have believed and received, that you need to begin to speak to those things, to speak them out loud over yourself. And so this month of September, I challenge you to not only pray about them, but begin to speak those things out of your mouth. It begins here. Sometimes it's hard to speak what we say we believe, but God is calling us and has called us to be congruent. That means to be in oneness, to act in alignment with, with what we say we believe and what we pray. And so therefore, your actions and your words and your thoughts should line up with what you are believing God for, with what you say in prayer. Because many times I find that even myself, mighty in prayer and then come out and you would never know what I was believing God for because I am confessing the opposite. And so I have challenged myself over this last year and have been doing really good at it, not doing that, not acting incongruent with that which I say I believe God for. And the, what happens is, we need to spend more time in his word, write down what you are believing God for and declare it over your life. Declare it over your life, the promises of God that you are believing him for. Declare those promises over your life and then it will change your conversation. And so, and when you declare it, when you speak those things in prayer that you're believing God for, then you begin to see yourself as he sees you and you believe what he says about you. I don't know which comes first. First, I think they all work together and then you begin to say it even more. So the word says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And as you begin to pray and speak God's word and meditate on it, you begin to believe it. That's faith coming by hearing the word of God. And then you begin to see it. And what I know for sure is that we have to believe what God says about us. We have to see him see ourselves as he sees us. And then we have to say what he says about us if we ever want to see the promises and purposes and prophetic words and the plans of God come to pass in our lives. Some things are just going to happen automatically. But even your faith in Christ, that Romans 10 says that if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and confess with your mouth. If you believe it, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ rose from the dead, then you will be saved. So there's some if then, even in salvation, you have to believe it in your heart. And then you confess it with your mouth and then you are saved and you begin to walk it out. And that's when you begin to see yourself as God sees you. So I think the first one is believing, but how does faith come? So you hear faith, right? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so Paul said, how would they hear if a preacher is not sent? So you have to put the word in your light, in your heart, and then you have to believe it. So what does that mean? You have to say what God says about you. You have to dig into this word and you have to uh, override erroneous thinking and override lies with truth. And if you haven't um, gotten my book, A Call to God's Daughters to Step to step into his lab, love, acceptance, and beauty based on the book of Ruth. There's a chapter in the back about mindset, measure, and mission. And in the mindset, because our mindset is our thoughts, our file cabinet, if you will, and the way that we act, or our thinking and our attitudes toward different things. So our mindsets affect how we respond to things, but then our measure can be changed. It is the way that we measure one another, or we can compare our lives to one another or what we measure ourselves up against. And so in order to change your mindset, 
the things that you filter through things through your thoughts and your responses and your reactions, your patterns of thinking. So a mindset, a, a, a picture a mindset as a, uh, a file folder. So you go into the file cabinet and you have an issue. And then your mind being like a file cabinet, you have an issue and you go in and you store away the how you should do something, instructions, how you should respond, how you should act, what you should do. And these mindsets come from years, even from childhood of believing and thinking and responding in a certain way, even how we were taught from other people with maybe erroneous or ungodly mindsets. We have learned things. And so Romans Tense. Romans 12, 2 says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And so you have to replace those mindsets with godly information and clear out your file cabinet and the instructions that you have in those folders. So I have a problem. I'm hurt. So how do I respond? You dig in your file cabinet and you find information quickly. Your mind pulls it out and says, this is how we respond. This is how we react. And so you have to replace that with the right thinking and right doing based on the word of God. And so what does this have to do with saying what God says about you when you're believing him for something? Because when we speak it, we call those things that be not as though they were. But if we are only saying, but if whatever we believe will come out of our mouths, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So we can change the way we see ourselves and we can change our mindsets and how we respond and make the word of God our first response to issues and make what we're believing God for, what we're praying for part of our conversation. And then let's go to measure and the way that we see ourselves, the measure is the standard or to degree to which you believe something about yourself. And so if you're measuring yourself based off of other people or lives and you're filtering yourself, filtering things through that, then you're measuring yourself wrongly, erroneously, ineffectively and not God's way. And so your measure needs to become the word of God that is seeing yourself as he sees you. And even when you see other people, you need to see them as God sees them. Because the Bible says the, the way that you measure other people is the way that you will be measured. And the way that you judge other people is the way that you will be judged. So when you think bad things by other people, it comes back to you. So learn to measure other people with the goodness of God, to believe the best of others, to believe the best of their intentions. And even when you find out it's not true, learn to forgive them and let them go. Even if you do not have space for them in your life, that you want to bless everyone and not speak cursing over them. And so why am I saying this? Because when we learn how to talk right, then that which we are believing God for has a better chance to come to pass because we're not speaking incongruently and contrary to what we say we believe, what we're confessing in prayer ought to be what we confess outside of prayer. And if you can't confess it outside of prayer because God is still asking you to guard it and keep it secret, then one thing that you can do or you're building up your faith to be able to say it openly is to not speak against it. Sometimes we come in agreement by our very words with the lies of the enemy because when we get in a pinch, we don't want to look stupid. So we go ahead and agree with something you might be believing for, I don't know, a new house. And somebody says, oh, houses are too expensive. You're never going to find a house and you're like, you're right, but you just believe God for it. Yeah, there, I'm going to have to wait. No, you should be, if you've asked God for favor to open up a door for you to purchase a house or to find a place, then in your conversation, you don't come in agreement with what somebody says, an evil report, and you don't release that into your atmosphere. So I'm going to ask you again, what are you believing God for? I want to encourage you this month of September to speak the word or silently stand in faith. That is an instruction that God gave me some years ago concerning some things of my life that when I am believing him for something, even when I'm not, it needs to be 
a daily practice to learn how to speak the word concerning certain things or silently stand because silence is a weapon. I am going to encourage you. I want to encourage you to Call those things that be not as though they were and build yourself up in your most holy faith, speaking in your prayer language in tongues and and then release the word of God over your life in your quiet time and then speak in agreement with what you are believing God for. And you do that by hearing faith. Faith comes by hearing. Get the word of God in you so that it begins to come out of you that it begins to shape your um, identity and the way you live your faith. So I want you to get the word of God in you this month. And then I want you to begin to speak what God says about you, put it in and let it come out and then begin to see. So say, see with your, not only your natural eyes, you may not see it right away with your natural eyes, but you can see it in the spirit. You can meditate on what God has said about you. You can do a vision board. You can put some things down. So see yourself the way God sees you. Say what he says about you. Believe what God has spoken over your life because it starts there. You're getting the word of God in you so that you can believe it more. You say you're believing, but your your but your words are not aligning. You want to believe, but you are also dealing with doubt. And so when you begin to speak God's word and meditate on it in a certain way, say you want to be married um, and you part of you feels like I want to be married, but I don't think anybody's going to marry me. I don't think I'm good enough. I don't think I'll ever find someone. Then you begin to um, speak that you are worthy of love, that you are worthy of being found in crown, that you are worthy of favor, that you are worthy of a godly mate, a godly husband. You begin to say that and you find scriptures in, in the um uh, in the Bible, a man that finds a wife finds a good thing and I am a good thing and I am a crown to his head. You begin to speak that whatever you're believing for your children, speak over their lives, pray faith filled prayers and then speak the word or silently stand. So I just want to encourage you in that uh, believe and believing comes by hearing the word of God. So you have to hear it and speak it out loud and then once you believe, say. So they those two work together. Speak the word and believe. Believe the word by, you believe it by speaking it. So you have to speak it over your life because it begins to shape your identity and the way you live your faith. It begins to tear down strongholds and the lies of the enemy and you transform. Uh, you are transformed by the renewing of your mind. It begins to renew your mind so that you can see the good and acceptable and perfect will of God for your life. And then... um take time and meditate on it. And so this is September. This is a challenge to you all September long. Um, I challenge even myself to speak the word or silently stand to be intentional about the conversations that I have, to be intentional about the things that I put into my ears and my eyes that don't line up with God's will, um, that I that I listen to, that I watch and all those things, because sometimes we don't even know it, but the things that we're watching for entertainment and education and those things are in direct conflict with what we're believing God for. They're telling you something else subliminally and subconsciously, and then you're not able to stand in faith over what you are asking God for. So I just want to encourage you to uh, with the word that God said, what are you believing me for? And how are you lining your life up with it and being congruent with it? That we are to war a good warfare over the prophetic words that have gone before us. We're to stand in faith with those promises that he's given to us. And this is a very practical way to do it. So God bless you. If you haven't, please subscribe, like my channel and hit the thumbs up like this video. <laughs> that means hit the thumbs up. I don't know why I always say that. Subscribe, like this video, and share it with someone. God bless you. Until next time.